Welcome everybody to the November 13th select board meeting. The meeting is now in session. I am very grateful for you all, uh, all, of, all of you who came here tonight. We have a very special guest who um, I will introduce shortly. But I just wanted to make something clear in your packet. There's, in the packet there was two pages of agendas. Um, they're, they're identical. Um, the time flow is just a little different, so don't be confused. We're gonna start with our honoring uh, Dr. Anna Ornstein, and then we're gonna go into a discussion about some work that uh, we've been doing uh, on the anti-Semitic front, and, and a discussion of some draft action items, and then we'll go sort of into our normal, normal uh, meeting routine. Yeah, turn it on, Andy. <laughs> okay, so, is that better? All right, everybody's ears pop. Um, and I am just admittedly increasing the font on my computer because the eyes aren't what they used to be. All right, so, um, Right. Um, this evening, we are going to stray from our typical agenda, as I just mentioned, uh, that timeline, so that we can honor our special guest, Dr. Anna Ornstein. As a... a as, as many of you know, Dr. Orenstein was present in Hungary at a time when it was allied with Nazi Germany. During this period, Anna watched as the Jews throughout her country were progressively marginalized. In 1944, Germany seized Hungary. Anna and her mother were sent to the notorious Nazi concentration camp Auschwitz. Upon arrival, they passed the selection with the words, ich kann arbeiten, which means I can work. Um, they were then sent to, a, to work in a quarry where Jewish women were subjected to beatings, starvation diets, and sleep deprivation. Surviving the work camp, her Anna and her mother returned to Auschwitz and endured horrific, endured horrific conditions. Again, they survived. As they were sent, they were sent to another work camp after Auschwitz, where the conditions were again abominable. Yet again, she and her mother survived just long enough to be liberated. Unfortunately, her father and grandmother were executed at Auschwitz, Auschwitz and at some point, her two brothers were murdered as well. Um, Anna and her husband Paul escaped communist Hungary, ending up in Germany to study medicine. Um, and they each earned a medical degree there. Shortly after that, they, immigra immigrated to the, they emigrated to the United States, where they each became psychiatrists. Today, Anna is a professor emerita of child <coughs> psychiatry at the University of Cincinnati and a lecturer at um, and a lecturer on psychiatry at the Harvard School of Medicine. But this is not why we honor Dr. Ornstein this evening. We honor her for the tremendous amount of time, energy, and knowledge she has so freely given to our town. I will ask um, the vice chair, Barry Berman, to read the certificate of gratitude and then, and then entertain a motion <coughs> to uh, approve. So actually, have you all read the, the cert certificate? Um, yes, it's all signed. It's all signed. So is it okay with the board if we proceed to the presentation of the cer certificate? Please. Great. Annie, 
you said it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you. Okay. okay? Um, as well as to everybody here, uh, and I can pretty much guarantee, although I have not been. Um, in town for 375 years. Um, this is probably the first proclamation that has anything written from the town of Reading in Hebrew, which right. I'm actually gonna read. And there's only a few people in here who know if I'm gonna make a mistake or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, this certificate of recognition is awarded by the town of Reading to Dr. Anna Hornstein. <laughs> which means, all the world is a very narrow bridge. The most important part is not to be afraid. The Reading Select Board acknowledges with appreciation the insights, dedication, and counsel of Dr. Anna Ornstein. Since her first presentation on May 9, 2013, she has engaged all Reading citizens, challenging us to open our hearts and minds to the reality that hate, stereotypes, and scapegoating begin with a few, and when not confronted, fester, like a contagion can confuse, terrorize, paralyze, even those with the best intentions. She has reinforced to us that if left unchecked, this hate can change people's perception of their world, their neighbors, and their friends. This hate can escalate to violence. It is our responsibility to confront hate each and every time it manifests with a listening heart, compassion, and education combined with the conviction that never again shall we allow hate and fear to become the norm, blinding citizens of our world to the beauty and value of every single person. As a reflection of Dr. Ornstein's insights to our community, we recognize that as individuals and as a community, we have a responsibility to cherish, nurture, protect, and celebrate all of our citizens. As leaders and as role models in our community, we embrace our responsibility to reject hate, stereotypes, and their multitude of manifestations. As elected officials, we recognize that we and others following us have the duty to protect the rights of all citizens to live without fear in our community and to provide the education, support, intervent and interventions necessary to ensure safety, acceptance, and equal opportunity to each and every citizen. As human beings, we commit to be upstanders, those who will choose to stand up for those being wrong, marginalized, or threatened. So I would like to entertain a motion <coughs> that we recognize Dr. Ornstein. Second. All those in favor? So Dr. Ornstein, would you please? Give you a yeah. That's mine. <laughs> I'm really very, very impressed and extremely pleased with that. At the same time, I'm not so sure I am deserving of it because but what I, 
The text is outstanding. You all agree with it, I hope. This is really the job to do. Um, I have listened to many people over the years that I have come, and now I feel that maybe I know your community, certainly better than I did when I first came out here. At first, you know, you see all the faces and you give what you're supposed to say, but I have gotten to know many of you, and I feel your, I do feel your struggle. This is a very difficult place to be, to know that most of the people living in this community are not in agreement with what you now have become famous for. I was actually quite distressed to find out. I don't get the Globe, but my daughter called me and said, did you see Reagan was in the Globe? I was not happy <laughs> because you don't want to be a poster child or the supposed that town in which this kind of thing keeps happening and then leaving you with the feeling that something is going on that you are not fully aware of <coughs> and also not in the position to fight because it is in the dark. It is, it is not easily available. Now, I will give you my two cents worth as they say in terms of what I learned from the experience and from reading much of it. One is the big question that I can understand if you have this in this community. What to do in terms of speaking about it? Should we speak? Should we be quiet? This is a difficult question to answer because there is a concern that if you are making too much of it, as they say, you know, then, oh, then you will get more of it. That is a very legitimate concern. So silence, and it would not be 100%, but it would be more into the direction of let's just keep this quiet, and also maybe that will not give the town a good name. That would be another concern. What we learned about keeping silent, that it did not work. It really did not. Yes, mistakes could be made in the other way around, but the kind of mistakes that were made in Germany, for example, with the silence, you don't want to face. <laughs> and I will give you a very brief uh, um, summary of, of what we learned in Germany. Hitler came to power in 1933. Two years later, books were burning. 1935 had seen the first set of anti-Semitic legislation. Yes, there were some Jews who saw the signs and left the country but not until 1938, at a time when already Jews could not attend universities, not even some high schools, they still felt that if they put their heads down and they behave themselves, it will all pass. After all, Hitler is a crazy man, it couldn't last. Then came Kristallnacht. Only a few days now we are, I think, the 13th. It was November 9th, 1938. 91 people died just that one night on the street. Synagogues were burning all over Germany. 30,000 Jews were arrested and taken to concentration camp. It was only then when violence broke out, that people said, why didn't we listen the first time around? Why did we think and hope that if we put our heads down and keep silent, it will go away? I am not comparing America to Germany. We will never, ever have anything 
like Kristallnacht and certainly not like Auschwitz. But there is a lesson to be learned about the question that as long as I'm quiet and behave myself, everything will be all right. I want to make one other point, and that has to do with resistance. <coughs> there was practically none in, uh, in Europe. Our neighbors were just very happy to see us being uh, collected and then deported. And I think that one of the problems may have been that the fractions, the social democrats with the communists and all the different uh, groups of people who could have mounted some form of resistance were fighting among each other. What would be horrible to see in this country <laughs> that people who could resist this situation begin to fight among each other. Because that's exactly what gives the opportunity for people to do their work, because they have no resistance. So I feel, felt, I, and now my last statement will be the joy, the real pleasure that I felt what followed the terrible event at Pittsburgh. You remember Pittsburgh was, I think, the 27th of October. Very soon after that Shabbat service, uh, people were gathering in synagogues, and most of them were filled to the brim, not only by Jews. That is the answer. When I was the other night uh, in Peabody, and there were some lovely young non-Jewish children coming from a Christian university to hear me speak, they came up with tears in their eyes. Dr. Ornstein, what can we do? I said, you have a lot to do. You have to stand by us. Because as long as there are non-Jews who speak up for their Jewish neighbors, this cannot happen in this country. The, whoever is instigating this kind of activity has to have collaborators, they have to have other people for it to be successful. And so that when you now work and you have programs, and I know you have amazing programs in the schools, or when you gather and, and, and show your, uh, your own feelings about it, namely the non-Jewish people come out and attend meetings and take part in these activities. I think that is probably the most reliable resistance that we can have. I don't know what you think about it. That's how I see it. Because I know what I felt after, uh, the, you know, when I read the reports about what happened after Pittsburgh, how in amazing all over, in Chicago, in Minnesota, Every community had a vigil. Every synagogue was filled rather than burned. <laughs> and so I am appealing, I don't know, I hope there are some people who hear that kind of a message, that we need to feel that kind of solidarity, to feel safe. Otherwise, the people who are sending out the, the swastikas and the messages, they would be the winners. Thank you so much for recognizing me for my work, which I do with great pleasure. It gives me really, I feel like it is a privilege to do whatever I do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ornstein, and we may not be done with you yet. 
Okay. Um, the, the next item up for discussion, and, and I wanted uh, Anna to have the opportunity to join us. Um, the next item, agenda item addresses the swastikas and other anti-Semitic vandalism occurring in Reading. You will see that each page of these proposed action items um, list the, the same four action items. The only difference between the two pages is that the second one includes more detail that the board may decide to get into or may not. Um, just a brief history of how this came together. On June 19th, the board committed in a statement uh, to combat these, co combat these repetitive acts of hate. On September 25th, the board held a public stakeholders meeting led by Barry Berman to gather ideas from, the com from members of the community. The four proposed action items up for discussion this evening are an attempt at putting words into action. It should be viewed, and I want to make this v very clear, as a working draft that we can talk about and all work on this evening um, in an inclusive manner. Uh, as indicated in the draft, we cannot infringe on the school committee's purview and should not proceed with items that involve the school committee's approval. Indeed, after talking with the school committee chair, I've provided Bob with suggested revisions that, that hope to make it even more clear that this is not an attempt by the select board at usurping any school committee authority, including that of the superintendent who reports to them. Um, with Anna's and the board's permission, uh, I'd like to invite her to join in the discussion. Sure. Everyone okay with that? Okay. Anna, you okay with that? Oh, sure. You know, I like to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So don't we all. Um, okay. Uh, so, let's see. To the talking points, let me just, uh, or, or action items. As I said, these are not carved in stone in my, um, in my opening introduction to these action items. I, the, the action items were inspired by the stakeholders meeting and um, I got an awful lot of help from the Human Relations Advisory Committee Chair, Josh Goldlust, who could not be with us this evening because he's off in Sunny California. So I would like to read through um, each uh, of the action items and, and then have us uh, discuss each action item, revise it to the extent possible, and um, try to make it as good as we can, as, as we can get it. Um, so let me start with the first one, Bob. I can't get that screen, I'm asking for technology. Once that got turned off, Okay, once that got turned off. All right, um, we shall uh, proceed anyway. So Andy, is this is something that the board has not seen? Is no, it gonna be up there or? No, the okay. board has seen it. The only, uh, the only th thing that is in right, red line strikeout are changes I made to try to make it very clear that we're not okay. infringing on the right. school okay. committee's approval. Okay. So, um, you know, please, um, I'll read the first one, and then I, I'd like us to sort of discuss it and uh, improve the wording, uh, improve the concept. Um, there, there's no pressure here, we don't have to vote on things tonight. Um, it's just a inclusive discussion that I'd like to have and I was, that's perfect. All right, thank you, Bob. So the, the proposed items, let me just show you, I'll read through them, e each one of them, okay? So the action item number one. Face the microphone. Oh, I can't face the microphone and the thing. So I just, 
tried to come up with a proposed definition of acts of hate and hate speech. It's a, it's a definition in progress. I look forward to the board's input and other people's input, but for the sake of this evening, it, it, it is acts or speech that are intended to insult, offend, intimidate a person because of some trait such as race, religion, sexual orientation, national origin, or disability. Um, so when you, when you see uh, acts of hate and hate speech in this document, that's, that's what we're sh shooting for. Um, this started with all the anti-Semitic uh, swastikas that we've seen in our schools and our town, um, but it has lately branched out in the, into other areas. So the select board, in partnership with the school committee, pending school committee, uh, pending consulta consultation with and approval by the school committee, um, established a standing human rights board or committee um, under selection board policy two to uh, one. The purpose of the human rights board would be to make addressing acts of hate and hate speech a community-wide priority, and two, to create a purposeful, strong, and permanent collaboration between the town side and the school side on these issues. Consistent with this purpose, the Human Rights Board shall not have um, a, sorry, uh, a sunset clause, thank you. Once established, the Human Rights, I had to add an S, board will replace the Human Relations Advisory Committee the Human Rights Board would be expected to be at the basis for a Human Rights Commission pending the next review of the town charter and approval by town meeting. So it would sort of be a uh, prototype for something that we could move into uh, town, ask town meetings approval on. Um, and the second item, sorry about. Do you wanna do them one at a time or do you wanna um, get the real one? It doesn't matter. Just yeah, let me, they're, they're short, okay. and, and um, I'd just like to read, read through them all, and then we can tackle them one at a time. I do action item two, the select board appoint a point person to oversee and coordinate the protocols for reporting acts of hate and hate speech. I just uh, learned today that protocols is probably not the right word here. Um, it implies something different than what is intended. Uh, the point person would work with the school committee and town manager, and with their permission, the superintendent and police chief, respectively. Because as everyone knows, the school committee supervises the superintendent, and, and the select board supervises the town manager. And they are um, the police, yeah, so, so we can't interfere at that level. Action item three. Um, the point person, I'm sorry, would not refringe on the purview of any other elected committee or board. Action item three, require anti-defamation like training as, of, as, as is available for members of the select board, the Reading police and fire departments and town staff uh, update our select board policy to include this requirement. Action item four, the town and select board adopt an accommodation policy for ethnic and religious observance similar to that of the Reading Public Schools. So with that, we can go back up to action item one. And do um, you want me to stand up there, Bob? And, you know, you type faster than I do. And uh, I'll open that up for discussion. So uh, yes, any board members like oh. to comment? Elaine. I just, I, this is not my Elaine, do you want to come up? Yeah, you should Sorry, come. I just want to say that I I, I'm pretty sure this is potentially an oversight, but most of the statements of anti-discrimination—most of the statements of anti-discrimination also include, based on gender identity, all the um, wording. I was just checking: um, race, color, sex, gender identity, religion, national origin, sexual orientation, or disability is the standard um, anti-discrimination statement that's used in the school. So I just wanted—I'm pretty sure Andy didn't intend to exclude any of those. No, thank you. Yes, thank you, Elaine. Yes, Bob. Just to follow up on that, we also as a town in our labor contracts and in our personnel policies have, if you will, boilerplate language a little different from this. Excellent. So, yes. Could I make a comment just about the school committee? Maybe refer to some things about the 
Yes, I, I, yes. yes. I, I wanted to just respond to um, the definition of, proposed definition of acts of um, hate and hate speech. Um, how does the board feel? I'm fine with changing it to um, the, either the boilerplate language that Bob has um, and replacing what's up there with I, that. I just have a question. Has Tom yeah. Council seen any of this? Um, no, but he will. he will. I think that might be a little premature. Yeah, I, this is, again. Not, not if we're voting on it tonight. It's not. Well, again. It's on, I mean, yeah, this it appears is, here for, for motions and votes. I mean. Yeah, that, that, that um, is if, if we decide we want to. It depends how we come out on this, okay? So, so and, and even then, it would be something that would um, go to town council and school committee for their items for their approval. It, but we have to start someplace, and I wanted it to, um, at the starting point, include all four, all five of us for input on these things. Um, so, so is everyone fine with changing that Dan, to Dan? Yeah, I, I am wholeheartedly in favor of the intent of what you're trying to do here. Uh, I'm a little concerned that uh, we may lack the right to jointly appoint such a human rights uh, okay. board, is it, mm -hmm. between the school committee. I don't think there's anything in our policies that allow that. Mm -hmm. It yes. would have to almost be a or town charter. You are, charter. you are correct. Um, or in the, in the charter, certainly we can't right. change the charter. I, I think my idea uh, on moving forward with this is f first we'd have to see um, what the school committee thinks of, of our, of the purpose of this um, uh, board or committee. And you've had discussions with the school committee or the chair? I, I've had some discussions with the chair, but it's really a six person board yeah. and I'd like it to go to the entire six person board. Please. <coughs> well, yeah, yes, yes. So, I, I just, li Andy and I have had conversations since Friday. So, I just want to be clear about a couple things. So, the important thing to acknowledge is what's being done right now in our community. Um, and we have a town manager, a superintendent, school resource officers, principals, assistant principals, police chief, deputy police chief, detectives, who are all working together in an extremely collaborative manner. Um, this, what the, how the school committee helps to make that happen is we are a policy board. We set policy, we set the budget, we drive the goals of the district, which in turn become the superintendent goals, those are the key things that we do. So we have policies, school committee has policies that help us work with the superintendent. We also have non-discrimination policies which basically um, enable everything that we do as a school committee as we interact with HRAC or we might interact with any other organization in town. So w one of the, as I had read these after receiving it on Friday, I, one thing that I felt um, certainly is that we, we can't even statutorily do anything, as you're sort of pointing out, that would um, take place, the place of the school committee's authority. And we as the school committee cannot tell Dr. Doherty exactly how to operate. We guide, we advise, we communicate, but it is up to him. It's up to him, he's been working with the town manager, the police chief, um, the deputy, all on how to really address these specific issues, how to communicate it, how to best, um, how to best basically in the end figure out, you know, who's doing this and how do we turn that around. But the school committee has, we don't need to change any policies uh, to participate in HRAC. Um, we have all the policies in place. I think that I, I don't personally understand the difference between a commission and a collaborative uh, uh, or a uh, coalition. I know that I was actually personally involved in the creation of a very successful and very powerful coalition uh, in this town, the Reading Coalition Against Substance Abuse. And it started with uh, meetings of the chair and vice chair of the school committee, Mrs. Camille Anthony at that time, I mean, the chairs of the school committee and the select board, um, which was myself and Camille Anthony, and 
and our uh, Pete Heckenbleckner, Pat Scatini, and Peg Saladay, who was a um, practitioner and executive in, uh, or director of a coalition in another community. And it started that way, and we put all of the right people together. So one of the things that concerned me about this was that it was missing, it's not up to the school committee really to decide if the superintendent should participate. These are the kinds of things that by staff, by the role they play in our community, they would have to be part of these. So I, I just, um, it was, I, I was a little bit surprised by the agenda item, but most of all, we have, a human relations advisory committee that now has the strong support of this board. You have the two chairs of the school, the chair of the school committee, the chair of the select board on that. I, I'm, you're shaking your head. What, can, what, what, else could, what else could we do? We are on those boards. What we need to do is stay with the structures that we have and look to improve them. So we might need to modify them. I'm gonna ask you to wrap it up okay. so we can so have I, people speak. I feel like this is, Rushing. I feel like we took a lot of time to decide about a coalition, yep. not maybe a commission, maybe it should be a coalition. Should the Union uh, Relations Advisory Board, which I serve on, have broader responsibilities? That's up to the select board, really. And, and the school committee would weigh in on that in their liaison role but it really is up to the select board. I just want the select board to, to know, you to know that the school committee will be, will be with you every step of the way because we already have it in our policies. So I feel like we should maybe take some incremental steps to keep the good things that we're doing in place but make them better where there are gaps. I think we should make them better. And I, I would agree with John Halsey. I don't think that these two boards can sort of do that together. I think that's under <laughs> your purview. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Elaine, just to r respond um, briefly, I do things a little differently as chair uh, of this board, and um, and just the chairs getting together and setting up something um, is not my style. I'd like the I'd like this discussed in the open with the select board, and um, and if the school committee cannot participate, um, then it cannot participate uh, in, 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 a, in a sort of board that interacts with the school committee and, and the select board, like, like uh, I, I assume um, our CASA does. Now, now, okay, I'm sorry, sorry. So I think there are some, there's some information, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I think it's very you, uh, uh, that you acknowledge all the work that is done within the schools. That, that's fantastic. And none of this detracts from that. This picks up sort of when the schools have done, gone through with their process and have, um, and then can communicate with the human relations, or the human rights committee or whatever, and as can the board. I think, the, what I, the sense of the community that I got was there, the request was that there be a board that sits between the school committee and the select board. Um, yes, Barry. So, um, I've read, I, you know, I read this thing. I, I have a, oh, sorry. I can do this in Hebrew too. No. <laughs> so, um, First of all, I want to acknowledge all the hard work that was put into just to kind of get this on a piece of paper, right, just so that we can have a discussion. So I, I just want to get that off, you know, sort of starting off the board there. Um, the other thing, Mr. Chair, uh, can I petition you and everyone else on this room that we no longer call this a stakeholders meeting? Because what it implies is that there are some people who are stakeholders and some people who are not. And when it comes to graffiti and hate and violence and non-acceptance, Everybody is a stakeholder. So uh, I, I just want to, if we can just do this that. This is not you know. a stakeholders meeting. All right, well, this is, it, it was. This is, this is okay. these are action items that came I'm out. I'm just of saying, going forward, can we yes. just not use that Absolutely. word? Okay, so, all right. so I read action item one, okay, as the action item basically is to replace with a new body something that we already have. 
Um, and so for me to kind of take that leap about wanting to kind of get together and do the work um, incrementally is I need to sort of feel, I, I need to sort of see the reasons of what a new body is going to do that what we have currently in place does not do. One of the things that um, I, I read in here is that um, there is a very strong uh, sentiment to have this sort of be a permanent committee and not be sunset, as is HRAC right now, is sort of under the, under the select board has to come up. Um, I, I'm perfectly happy to make a motion that basically makes HRAC a permanent um, committee that does not, you know, not subject to, 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 um, to sunset. Um, so, I think we need to have a discussion about what are the duties and responsibilities and the protocols of what this new organization, however we decide to call it, will do that our current structure does not accomplish or what our current structure as, as, as what we have now without, you know, without tweaking cannot do. So I, I think that that's a, 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 before we move forward on language or anything else, I need to hear about what this is gonna look like, what it's gonna do and why it's not working the way it is. Now, we all know why it didn't work in the past. There was a, there was a contentious relationship between HRAC and the Board of Selectmen, yeah. as it was called then. That's just the facts. I don't think that exists now. I think given what this, what, what this board has done when HRAC came to us to endorse question three, I think we've made incredible strides. So if it's just that, in my mind, that's not compelling enough. I need to hear what else this is gonna do. And then as I read through it too about it's sort of like, you know, who is, you know, we're gonna put a group together that's gonna work, uh, you know, work together. Um, you know, to quote Hamilton, my favorite song, I wanna be in the room where it happens. <laughs> There's a lot of people who are, should be in the room where it happens which are not listed on here. So, for example, on HRAC right now, you have members of the police department, that's not listed here. Um, we've got members of the clergy, that's not listed here. Um, uh, METCO doesn't have a seat on HRAC, but it's not listed here. Veterans groups are not listed here. To me, these are the kinds of folks that should be kind of participating in this that, that aren't. And so I don't wanna, I don't wanna start off with the assumption that we're gonna just create something new when we haven't really looked under the hood to see if what we have right now can't work. Now I'm not opposed to it, and I'm not opposed on working in a subcommittee uh, of working on that. In fact, actually, if there is one, I would like to be on it. Um, because I do think that, that as, as an issue, this is probably the most important thing facing the town. But I don't want us going down a path where we're gonna create something new just for the sake of creating something new. I wanna hear the compelling reasons why that's needed and why that's better than what we have right now. Um, so that's kind of, before I can vote on sort of moving forward on a position, I, I kind of want to hear that part. So I, I think I'm gonna stop here right now. I, I do have some other questions, especially around sort of why this was even come under select board policy, if what we're trying to do is to get it out from under the select board, why we're putting it in policy, especially, I feel very uncomfortable if there's gonna be other groups, and in fact, we haven't even included the library trustees in here, so that's another mm -hmm. group, um, about why that's gonna be under our policies when we're trying to create something new. So that's all I have for now, and I'll stop. Well, I'd like can to I, ask, can I jump in? yes. Can I have the mic? Yes, you may. Okay. Um, so Barry, I want to thank you for acknowledging that there has been a contentious history between ATRAC and this board formally. Um, and I think it's important to recognize the fact that three years from now, none of us may be on this board. And we don't know what the composition of that board is going to be or how embracing they're going to be of these types of issues. So I see a need for an independent board so that going forward as this board changes, there is a stability within whether it's a human rights board or commission or, or what have you um, that is not tied to the makeup and composition of our board, but operate independently with a mission um, to pursue human rights within our community. So that in and of itself, to me, is an argument for why we need an independent board. Now I agree, there's certainly, you know, this is a draft document, there's a, 
long list of people that need to be included in this discussion, um, and we can amend that accordingly. Uh, but I, I think this is something we need to seriously <coughs> consider, not to detract from the efforts that are currently being undertaken by existing groups, um, but simply to give them autonomy to move forward on efforts that they prioritize. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, I just wanted to um, ask, uh, make a couple of points. As far as a, a committee or subcommittee to develop this, Barry, um, that's, I made, a, I took a wild stab at that on the second page. That would be an ad hoc committee, and we can change its makeup. That would develop the mission of the, uh, this human rights committee or whatever. Um, and, and so there would be a process for that. Again, this is just to get things m moving. I, I, I'm a little frustrated, I'm sure many of you are. Um, this has been going on for uh, quite a while, and, and I'd like, and, and the, the town needs to do something, but some of the activity uh, is expressed in the school system. So not to have some sort of partnership with the schools, I, I, that's a high priority to me. Um, and, and in order to be a little productive this evening and positive, uh, Barry, would you mind adding in some of those groups into this language um, so that Bob can update this and, and, and improve this document? Um. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm sure the list that I just gave out was just sort of off the top of my head. I'm sure there's other folks, but again, it's 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 sort of saying that this is what we're going to do, mm -hmm. right? When again, for me, um, I want to I want to sort of it's more important for me to understand what the duties, the roles, and the protocols of a new group, what what it would do, right? So, you know. Um, well, so, uh, the, uh, if I may, yeah. can I have the mic again? Yeah. Um, so, I, I, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like this is an ad hoc committee to help yeah. establish the Human Rights Board. So we're not saying we're going to decide what the Human Rights Board is right here. We're saying we need a group of people who are well informed on this topic to decide what a Human Rights Board would look like and what their mission would be and how people would join it and who would be included. Um, then with my assumption would be that they then make the recommendation, whether it's to town meeting or to us or to who, whoever has the authority to create this, and then that's voted upon by the whole. And, and I, I want to make a comment here, too, that, <clears throat> you know, we had the original meeting back in September. So 25th, yeah. Thank you. I want to make sure we don't get bogged down in the technicalities and the procedural aspect of our roles, right? We're in agreement that this is a problem in our community. We're in agreement that we need to do something about it. So uh, admittedly, this particular list doesn't have all of the nitty gritty details. It's not 100% accurate as it stands now. Let's make it better and move it forward. Arguing, or not arguing. Um, Making the emphasis on the authority of these particular things isn't doesn't help us advance. It just keeps us kicking this can around. Yeah. Why, anyway, why don't from we the, take some from the yeah board. public well, public yeah. Yeah, right. there are yeah. two other people on the board yeah, yeah but okay. you, you hadn't you didn't, raise, check in. you didn't raise your hand John but I'd be happy to well I'm it. respectfully listening to the the other members of the board would I you like to say something now I would go ahead. Yes, <laughs> I'm happy to get the microphone, Bill. Um, I think that um, there's a few things, I, I mean, there's many things that come to mind when I look at the document and when I listen to what Barry has had to say and Vanessa's had to say <clears throat> and what Elaine has had to say. Um, and I think that there's a piece of all of that that I'm strongly in agreement with. Um, a couple of things for point of clarity. Um, I mean, we've had two members talk about, you know, a contentious relationship between HRAC and the a previous select board, uh, and frankly, it had nothing to do with these topics, so I think we need to be clear about that, that it was not about these topics. There was a, you know, questions of form over substance, 
and I think that we're in a better place than we have been in the past, and I'm very happy about that. Um, when you look forward, um, I think that Elaine has brought up a, a series of points that are really important to think about. Um, let me preface that by saying I, I, I'm personally in no disagreement with the spirit of this, none whatsoever. You know, we do have a problem. It's manifested itself. Um, the good doctor said, you know, you don't want to be a poster child for this kind of bad behavior, and she's absolutely right. I mean, um, I was at a meeting in, in town uh, today, and these are people that are not connected to our town. It had nothing to do with my service, you know, as a selectman. And I say, you know what I heard? What's going on in Reading? The guys are in the news every night. Okay, we, we got a problem. We got to deal with it. So then you got to figure out how you're going to deal with it. And I think Elaine brings up a point that, you know, we actually have a system that is not foolproof, but it's, you know, it's been thought through. I mean, you know, we've got action that's being taken by our town manager, um, by our police department, um, by the superintendent of schools. They collaborate when these things come up. And is it perfect? No. I mean, it does, can it be improved? Absolutely. Um, HRAC, I mean, the idea of a renaming exercise for the sake of renaming, I don't think is a great idea. Um, I think, you know, you got to figure out what you're really doing here. I would suggest that there are several things to consider. One is that the Board of Selectmen, you know, besides fixing potholes and, you know, doing uh, liquor licenses like we're going to do, and, you know, concern ourselves with parks like we will tonight, these are all our jobs, um, and we're a group of five people. Town meeting comes together on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, first of all, if you're, if you're gonna create a advisory commission, a, uh, a commission that is going to report to the town on town issues, you've got one, it's called FinCom. It's a, you know, it's a committee of town meeting. Uh, you've got the bylaw committee. It's a committee of town meeting. I mean, this seems to me to not be under our purview. I mean, if this is something that, I mean, I don't see any provision for us to collaborate with the school committee beyond what we do. I mean, we, you know, there are committees and what we do is we put ourselves on, you know, we have liaisons and there's a lot of activity. And I think that there's a process that's going on to try to legislate it from our level, I think is very difficult. We gotta get this right. I mean, that's my opinion, because we do not want to be the poster child for bad behavior um, and inappropriate comments and inappropriate signs and all of that kind of nonsense that none of us think is appropriate or, or acceptable. But we've gotta go about it, you know, kind of ready aim fire, not ready fire aim. And I think that the better way to do that for one of the things that comes to mind right off the bat is town meeting without any problems with open meeting laws or anything like that could put together, you know, uh, you know, a, an ad hoc committee that could include exactly. a couple of selectmen, could include a couple of people from, you know, the from the school committee. Uh, they really are the body that ought to be looking at this and driving that bus, in my opinion. Because now, you've got 192 of our citizens looking at this. You've got the collaboration of many more minds. Many of the people in this room tonight are town meeting members and probably would enjoy participating in that in an official way in their capacity as an elected person in this town to represent the citizens. So I think one of the things, I, I applaud the fact that we're getting it on the table and don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. okay? You gotta let me finish this, okay? I, 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 I got you, I just wanna make sure we get time for everybody. Okay, you know, there's a few things in here that we gotta really think about. You know, the select board appoints a person to oversee and coordinate the protocols. Well, whatever that means, but you know what? What you're talking about is, a, is appointing a person who is not elected, who appoints them to essentially supervise 
our town manager and our and our superintendent of schools and our police chiefs who are already working on this. That is not what I'm proposing, John. I, I don't think that you are, but I'm saying so, the way that this looks, right. it looks like that's what so we're trying to do. help me change the language I, so, I so that, that it gets to the point. I want to res I'd like to respond and then, and then give Dan a chance to talk and people from the audience. I, I, I hear all of As these concerns. As a point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can I say to you that restricting this discussion is not a good idea. This is really an important discussion that we've got to get right. And so I'm not done talking and you want to stop me so that Dan can talk and everybody out there and I'm okay with that. And if we're here till midnight, I'm good with that. John. Because I've been here till midnight many times. It, it is just um, the chair's effort to to um, make sure we have time, everyone has time to speak. You know, and I'm respectful of that, but I, I just will say. And I, and I mean you no disrespect. I, and I know you don't, and I, and I don't to you either. I, I just think we've got to be sure that we expand this discussion in a way that gets it right. That's all I'm saying, and you know, I don't, I'm not trying to be testy with you, so yeah. I'll leave it at that. Dan. One suggestion, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I've seen this done on numerous occasions over the years at town meeting, uh, we always have a, an article to uh, appoint special committees. It's either Article 2 in the fall, Article 3 in the spring. Yeah. Um, the second half of your action item, uh, which is not up here, uh, mm -hmm. could form the basis of su such an instructional motion. Uh, move to appoint an ad hoc committee appointed by the moderator, you might say, uh, consisting of and then your membership or some variation. Uh, that's a mechanism to put it before right. the body, and that mechanism is already there under Article 2. So yeah. that could be done Thursday evening. Yeah. Thank you. Vanessa, okay. could I have the mic? Um, so I just wanted to respond uh, to a couple of the comments of, of my fellow members. Um, I think I want to remind us of our, our statement that we made June 19th, the last sentence was, the board commits to increase its efforts to combat these repetitive acts of hate. And um, I have tried to stay true to that through setting up a meeting where we could get input from the community and now take some action. I don't disagree with um, having this starting to go through town meeting, although I think it's as a practical matter, uh, nothing can be done until they, it's time to review and um, the charter and change the charter. But we can act um, f faster than the typical speed of government. I I'd like to do, I'd like to start doing some things um, as soon as possible. If it's possible to and legal to, um, have a board that sits between the school committee and um, the select board, great. If it turns out that is not possible, we'll ha have to change our, um, this is a work in progress. So, so anyway, with that. Mr. Chair, can I make, can I just I, I, make I'd a, like to make get, a, ask a question, just, just. Yes. So, um, I agree on June 19th, the board committed to taking action. So. One of the things, and, and, and Dan kind of, you said what I was kind of thinking as, as we were doing it. Um, so this board could take a vote that we as a board put an instructional motion on Thursday night in front of town meeting that establishes an ad hoc committee that starts to begin to look at these, um, whether it's creating a new board or commission, um, but that that instructional motion comes from the from the board, from us, the five of us, um, presented you know, you know ad hoc to at the end of town meeting Thursday night or, or Monday whenever that is, um, and then if town meeting blesses it, then we can create that ad hoc meeting and then that uh, that committee and then that committee will report to town meeting because the other question that I had is well. Who is this ad hoc going to report to? It's, you got, you have you have school committee people there, but we appointed them. But do they? Who, so if it goes to town meeting, as a board, yeah. right? Then we report to town meeting, right? And those findings are reported to town meeting, and then they filter back into the different, um, the different um, uh, committee, the school committee, the trustees, us, um, and then we come up with some kind of plan of action. 
that we can all kind of get on board together as opposed to a going through a select board policy. And um, so I don't presume to know what the end looks like, um, but I'm, uh, what I would be excited about is the process of trying to find it out. What this seemed like to me was that, well, here's how what we're gonna, this is what it's gonna look like, and here's how we get there. I would like to see how we're gonna get there and then what it looks like. So I would make a motion that, you know, I don't know how to make the motion, but that this board so can I, create, can I you know. You Barry for a moment? Barry. I, I was gonna make a motion. But. Yeah, we're, we're, I'd like to discuss these items before okay. we make motions. So, can I come on? Yeah, um, I just wanna say one problem, I think it's great to go to town meeting, but when does town meeting meet again after November? Anytime no. we bring them in, they, anytime we, can we bring we can them call in, a special town right? Meeting anytime we want, but, uh, but they can't change the charter. They can make an ad hoc committee, uh, ad hoc committee to develop something, but they can't actually put it in place. At least not that I can read in the charter until the charter is revised. That's and how it starts, Andy. Yeah, town meeting. for town meeting. But Dan, for us. We can create boards and committees. Yeah. It, we're allowed to, we've done it. Um, there are a number of standing boards and commission, committees that this, this body has created. So um, I, I want to start to move forward and, and creating things like this. Can I make a like suggestion? That. Yes. Uh, can we table a piece of this discussion till later when Ray will be here for the liquor discussion? Mm -hmm. Why don't we get a read from him on that before we take final action? I, and I realize it might mean keeping people here a little yeah. longer. I, Ray I really would like to hear okay, him more than on this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'd like to take a moment to take, take a step back. Um, I feel that we're getting caught up in a lot of the procedural red tape of are. government. <laughs> Yep. And I'd like to ask that we assume good intentions, which is that we as a board, as the leaders of this community, want to take positive steps to addressing some of the issues we have here. At our meeting in September, there were 17 suggestions put forward. These just happened to be four that have been selected. My, by having this go through town meeting, through an official process, the reality is it's going to move tremendously slowly because let's be realistic, government is slow. So by having a, this ad hoc committee, and let's, let's close the laptops and ignore this language, right? That's been put forward, sorry Andy. Um, but if we set that aside, I think we can agree that the goal is to get the right people in the room to start talking about these issues and then determine what the official step forward and what that path is and what it looks like and who it involves and whether it needs a charter change or town meeting or whatever that technical side of it is. But let's just get the people, we right here have the authority to create an ad hoc committee and to start this process. And that's it. Then we can see what they recommend. You know, getting Ray's input seems tremendously premature to me because we don't have a plan. And I love Ray and I appreciate his, his feedback, but we have nothing to put in front of him right now. We ultimately want to get a group of people together talking. Let's just do that. So why can't we this do that in two day. more days? Yeah. And we have yeah, the blessing of town meeting. To be recognized. Because Sorry, Mr. Chair. No, I, yeah. we could. Right. And then the next time they present is in April. So. No, the report will report back to the report. They would meet between right. November 15th and April. But no additional action could be taken until April, whereas we meet every other week. And it may get stuck at that point where, yes, the town we, meeting needs to wait. We call a test just, John, just, just a second. I, I want to try but, to but keep But let's be realistic. We're, we're not order. going to call a special town meeting for this to get 200 people in the room. Yeah, it's a meritous point. Uh, could, you know, could, technically, could, yes. But uh, guys, please just wait to be acknowledged. I'm not trying to be oppressive or anything, but I don't want this to become a free-for-all. I, I, there's some hand raised yes, in the audience, yes. so perhaps we can ask them yeah, for feedback. Yeah. Should, uh, is there a microphone out there? 
Yeah, let me um, let me have a microphone so I can uh, point to people. So, what's the input? It's too early, man. Yeah, Gina. I use the mic. Let's give her a mic. We'll give you a mic. Yeah. Well, there's one there. Too. Well, you can come up here. Or you can come up here, Gina, right here. Don't drop the mic. So, hi, all. I started all this discussion on, in September. It was my recommendation, so sorry. <laughs> Guilty. Um, thanks for talking about it and for really thinking about it thoughtfully. I mean, the fact that we're having this discussion with school committee chair and the people here in the room, I think, is really important. Um, lots of towns do this as a collaboration between the school side and the town side. That was the vision of what Red put forth in its uh, recommendations. That's what we envisioned for a committee, a coalition, uh, whatever it's called, doesn't matter, call it a ham sandwich. Um, the idea and the spirit is in line with what other towns do and uh, town, uh, town meeting has done this in other towns. So yes, that's what I was envisioning also. also. Um, like FinCom, like these other things that we were talking about, sitting between, as no one in this town thinks about what your job is and what your job, sorry, and what your job is. They just think, I live in this town, and who's talking about these issues for me? Who's talking to me? Um, and so a board that sits between the school and the towns, which is, a dividing line that many people in this town don't know about. They don't see it. They don't understand that dividing line. So something that sits in the town, that other towns also do, where the school committee um, appoints three members. The, um, the board of selectmen appoints three members. Um, the police chief appoints members. The library could appoint members. These are the way other towns do it. Um, and that's the spirit that read offered this suggestion. So the mechanics of it I know are difficult, um, but hopefully that gives you a sense of, of what other towns have done um, and, and the spirit that it was offered in. Um, my vision, one suggestion could be that this board um, form an ad hoc committee to start these discussions. Um, get the people in the room to find out what's possible, what, what's possible. You know, maybe this would be, this would allow the schools to have a much more hands-on and um, uh, leadership role in this board, not just one person, but it would be half, could be half the committee, it could be up to 13 people on it, and maybe five are appointed by the school committee. Um, and so if, you, if, if there was a, an ad hoc committee to start thinking about these issues and then have a warrant article for April um, where some of the work has been done already um, so that it's not town committee trying to make it up on the spot, if the work has been done um, and come up with a warrant article for them to recommend or approve. So thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thanks, Jim. Anyone else? Yes, Help. Bill. And then Linda, and then please other people chime in. Excuse me, uh, Bill Brown, 28 miles um, I have a little problem with the first sentence, public access HC. So far as I know, everything has been repeated, which is scandalous. When you start talking HC, who determines what is HC? I have the right. Ron, uh, I'm sorry, Bill. You can't. You, you cannot say that. The, the, 
the, yeah, that, that, that that bill, that, that's essentially a threat to the school board. Or, I'm sorry, the school board, sorry. The select, the select board. Your Second Amendment right is your right to bear arms, um, and, and I don't think that's appropriate. Uh, as to your first comment about free speech, um, I am not proposing criminalizing, uh, I mean, there are already laws on the books about stuff. This board is not gonna set any laws or um, anything. It's to create uh, a cult, try to create a culture in town that is against uh, swastikas. And I think that's a perf perfectly reasonable thing to do. Yes. Um, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Um, get her mic. Yeah, actually, it would be good because people on TV can't hear you, so you probably should. This is televised. Yeah, sorry. You get to stand up in front of everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, sir, I am totally agree it is your right to hate anyone you love to hate, um, but it's also other people's right not to be discriminated because of who they choose to love, who, what color they are, how they choose they to practice, to, to praise whomever it is they praise or not praise. And I think we take advantage of the words freedom of speech. It is your freedom of speech to speak and do what you will and like but it's also other people's freedom to not have to tolerate that kind of behavior. And I only think that maybe it, it, it's, it's, it is, it's, it's all in language. And we all speak languages of many different kinds. And we don't have to use it to hurt people. I think using words to hate. We say kids ha hate broccoli, but just do I have to tell somebody I hate broccoli just because I don't want to eat it? No. If you don't like me, you don't have to speak to me. You don't have to be my friend. It's my right to go to school or to send my children to school and not have to fear for their lives and know that they're going to school where somebody's going to say they hate them. I can't change the color of my skin, but I'm thankful for the color of my skin. Why? Because my Lord and Savior gave it to me and I can't change it. I can't change the way you feel but I hope to God to change the way somebody feels by letting them know that it's not okay to hurt other people. I don't know what has been done and what more can be done, but I do know that something has to change because sweeping it under the rug didn't work whispering about it quietly amongst ourselves is not working. Speaking to the public is not working because we're still trying to do it without hurting the people who are doing it. We're not glorifying it. We're still trying to sweep it under the rug because we don't want to look like the town that people are talking about negatively. So let's stop being the town that they're talking about negatively. Let's start being the town that I know that we can be and come together as a family and show that we are much more than the hateful acts that are going on. I've been in Reading as a Metco parent for 13 years. I have a 24-year-old daughter who graduated from school here. And when she came home on many occasions and said that she didn't like coming to school in Reading 
because she felt Brighton was prejudiced and racist. I didn't understand what she was feeling. I wasn't in her shoes. And I kind of swept it under the rug by not saying anything, by not speaking out, because I didn't want my daughter to stand out and be bullied and be picked on. And then graffiti was written that said, kill the niggers, and it specifically named a student to be next. And yes, a few days later we got an email, a few days later, when anything could have happened. And yes, it was, we're addressing it, we're looking into it. It's been four years now. I still don't know what happened to that situation. And then many a times I open an email and I hear or read swastikas are written in the snow on people's cars. Hate is being written on bathrooms where our children go to school. We turn on the TV and there's another school shooting. And I'm afraid that one day that I may turn on the TV and writing is not on there because it's another hateful word that's being written on a bathroom or in a stairway or on the floor in a classroom, but it's being acted upon. I think everyone in this room is tired of being scared. And the bottom line is, however we choose to do it, whether it's choosing a board, whether it comes from the school committee, whether it comes from the select board, which I don't like the name select men, by the way, <laughs> because you have some beautiful women on your board. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it does need to come. And it needs to come from the community that, that you represent, that you represent, that everyone out here represents. Coming together like you do when things come, go wrong in a family, you all come together. That's what we need to do. Stop worrying about what board it's coming from and who's gonna be on it. We all need to just put pen to paper and make our feet do the walking and get some action going. Because definitely the people who are committing these crimes, they're not sitting around chatting like we are, trying to figure out what's their next move. They've already made their next move, we just haven't found it yet. speak? Yes. yes. <laughs> you have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I agree. We're sitting here quibbling about who's going to do what. We need to break down the silos. We need to work together. We need to start figuring out how we can take steps to move ahead. We do have very devoted volunteers who are willing to work. We have a human relations advisory committee that has faced four years plus of challenges and they're willing to move ahead, but they need our help. The definition of that group needs help. It needs reworking. We can do that together. It doesn't have to be select board or school committee. It needs to be all of us. That being said, it's hard to work things out in 10 minutes. It's going to take time and we have to have patience. But while we're working on that, all of our other actions, proactive actions, don't have to stop. We need to stop just being reactive. We need to be proactive. And I think that there are ways that the board, the boards, the town can do that. One of the ways is this committee, one of the ways, another ways is looking at 
the precedent that's been set in other towns. Thank you very much for mentioning that. There's also restorative justice practices. It was mentioned that we don't know what happens after investigations. Well, there are people working on this. Attorney General Marion Ryan has been, District Attorney, sorry, Marion Ryan has been working with restorative justice. And having restorative justice circles brings people to the table, generates conversation, generates compassion and learning so that they, people can take that out into the community and change the culture of the community. That's what we need to do. We need to work on the culture of our community. It can't be the First Amendment gives us the right to call someone a kike in the hallway. Not their right to call someone a kike in the hallway. That's a personal attack. That's a wound. It's not a bullet. They're going to be open. It's not a. It's not a sword. It's a wound that lasts. And our students and our town need to stop feeling afraid, and we need to stop quibbling over the First Amendment rights. Those are there, but we don't have to condone what is said. We need to stand up and say, that's not what my town stands for. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. I think I Thank used you, my um, yeah, Yes. Also, I should remind people to state their name and uh, uh, street, street. Teresa Wiggins, 61 Terrace Park. Uh, this is off the cuff, uh, but I felt the need to um, just uh, agree with what has been said, that we need action. Um, it's been too long of kicking the can down the road in terms from former uh, selectmen um, to kick the can down the road on this issue. Um, sir? I don't Actually, appreciate. I'm sorry. We can't. Reason, we can't address. You're I'm sorry. Supposed to address me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I. I'm very disheartened when I feel that there's a lot of quibbling in a room uh, between board members when we're trying to work on something positive, but also when. when a threat arises in a room from somebody. I'll say that. Children were driven from this room tonight for fear. I will also say before I have to leave, um, I'm a parent educator and aside from this whole effort that is hopefully gonna be put forth tonight, um, I am going to be starting a free education for parents to come and talk and have courageous conversation on how to talk with their own children about inclusion. This is what I want to talk about. This is what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. So it's going to be a series of yes. free workshops. People can contact me for um, holding them in say. their living rooms. I'll come to your living room. I'll hold it in the library. Um, I'm in the process of putting this together and have volunteers. So. Reach out, Teresa Wiggins, Village Parenting. Good night. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, uh, I didn't intend to speak, but I do want to say something. I see that the activity has to be coming from two sides. One, that you, Linda, are emphasizing, and all the educators, people who want to get the group together and strengthen their sense of right and wrong and not worry about the illegalities but just in terms of the fear. Yes, we need that. But the other side is the big question. And somehow, when you mentioned, Teresa mentioned parenting, that struck, struck me as exactly the area that I feel something has to be done. Earlier, before we began to talk, you talked to me, Bob, yes? Very briefly, in terms of do we know where this hate, where the source is? Where does it come from? It cannot be neglected. We cannot put only effort into educating ourselves how to be better and help, helping other people. My feeling is that this, there, is, there are many more people who want good feelings to prevail 
and not the hate to prepare. That's very obvious. But you do have to find the source. And uh, that is when I now understand that parents will have to protect their children from um, being exposed if they are doing this swastika business. The question to me then is, what are we doing? How do we have the parents to talk to their children? Could that be the source that we have to go to? Will these parents who don't want to go the legal way or the official way speak to people who want to help them to help their children not to do that can cause this kind of harm to other people? I don't know if these are the parents who would actually be willing to do that. But that, to me, seems to be the source of the problem that even though you may have the child, you may have the resistance, so to speak, but do we have the parent who is taking care of this child who is then doing the stuff that gets the whole community in an uproar? That's all. Um, more last, last comment we got to, I don't mean to cut you short, but we, we got to, behind and I'd like to have, make some progress on this. Uh, Mark Doxer, 110 Beaver Road. A um, couple of things. One, I want to applaud the fact that this is brought forward this evening. I want to thank the board for bringing it forward, but I really want to thank Andy Friedman for bringing it forward because I know that that's kind of the impetus that made this thing happen. I think it's a very important discussion for us to have. What we're discussing are our priorities as a community. And I have to admit, it's been a very frustrating evening sitting here listening to procedural discussions and not substance. And I think that's what we gotta get past. And I'm sorry that the, the chair of the school committee isn't here at the moment, but one of the issues that I think we face as a town is that we have some silos and they themselves aren't gonna be able to deal with the community priority. They just aren't. We need to figure out a way to get around that and fix it and make it in a way that everyone's gonna work through. And I think that, Barry, one of your questions was why do we need this? Because these silos are very evident and they're problematic. And unfortunately, the speeches from various members of the board tonight highlighted that to me, that we're, we're, we can't get of our own, out of our own way a little bit here. And, and I, I I really think this is a community priority issue that we need to stand up for, figure out how we're gonna do it. I think this is a great start in terms of a discussion. I agree that we don't have anything to share yet because the discussion hasn't yet taken place. But if we don't move it ahead, and we don't move it ahead with boards that meet weekly, I don't think we have a chance of getting it done. I think town meeting can definitely play an important role um, they can certainly support the activities going on, but that's not a group that gets together on a regular basis, nor is it reasonable to think that they could. I really think that the, the boards that are getting together every week and the leaders of the town, the elected leaders of the town, need to stand up and make a statement about the community priority and make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So uh, I'm gonna try to, s uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Becky. We need to we need to move forward. We need to get some. I'd like to I'd like to take some action. So here's the here's the deal. Um, I put before the board. We are in a bit of a crisis right now. We're we're widely known for our swastikas, and we need to take action as soon as possible um, because and. And quibbling about the procedural aspects um, it, it, it is not going to move us forward. So I would like to act, and and but what I hear from the board is that n not everyone is on board with um, something like a human rights uh, board or committee that we have the power to set up, and whether it can be involved with the you know be involved with the schools yet. 
that can be explored by the ad hoc committee. But we can't move forward to improve the wording of item number, action item number one, which is a, essentially a human rights uh, board that we would form through an ad hoc committee um, if people don't feel, don't, if, if select board members do not want it. I need an understanding, a feel for the board of, of whether or not that is something you would support or not. Please keep your responses brief. We need to move on. Did you call on me? I just want yes, to make sure. Yes, I called on okay. um, <laughs> So I've heard all this. Um, and again, I don't know what the final outcome should look like. But I agree that action needs to take place. So I'm going to make a motion that's going to be sloppy. Um, and, and I invite my colleagues to uh, uh, amend it. Um, so I do want to make a motion that this board, right slowly, because I'm thinking slowly. Um, uh, Barry. That this board, I want to make a motion. Okay, I, time out. I did ask, I want to ask the feeling of the board before a motion is made. I'd like to know if well, there we make is a, generally we this. make a motion and then there's, there's generally. Uh, Barry, uh, pl uh, please okay. just let the board, rest of the board speak and then we can make a motion. I need to find out fr from the board if there is the will to do this or not, um, this basic thing. And we can iron out the details. I, I would recommend through an ad hoc committee. So I'm, I'd so like to ask each of you, is there support for this yes. type of committee? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Vanessa. Yes. D uh, John. What is the question you're asking? So is I there support? Is there a support? Is there support for a type of board uh, that I have described in action item number one? Uh, it, it can, uh, whether or not it can work with the schools and, and what activity, we don't know. We need an ad hoc committee to look into that. So are you asking me if I would support the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. creating another board? Yes. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so Barry, uh, go ahead and make your motion. I'm sorry, I'd love to let you talk, but. I just have a question. While you're making your motions, I'd like to know whether education is part of the board. Because we can make as many boards as we want. Yeah. But if education is not there to back up the boards. Yeah, I, I hear you, and we're working on that, but we need to start, we need to start someplace. And I'm sorry, I agree with you. Okay, um, Barry. Okay, so my motion was simply going to be to create an ad hoc committee of the select board that starts to look into this, um, and I don't know who's on it. I don't know who it reports to. I don't know when the end date is, but I'm making a, so I'm making a motion that we create an ad hoc committee of the select board. Um, Appointed by the select board. Appointed, appointed by the select board mm -hmm. um, that begins to look at issues which include, but don't don't ex but, but don't, aren't exclusive of creating a human rights board or committee. Um, so at least it gets the it gets it gets our, our, our as it should be said moving the feet in front of the other. Um, but it doesn't presuppose what it's going to look like. It just means that we just start. So. I make that motion. I don't know if it needs to, it, it's probably, like I'll I said, it's lousy um, yeah. in terms of who's going to be on it, how many members, when it put to all that other stuff. Second. But I make the motion. I second. Well, I hear a second. So let's discuss this. Okay. Um, Barry, I think um, we just make it a little more, give some marching orders to the ad hoc committee. Um, we just start with uh, a human rights committee or board. And if the ad hoc committee feels that that name needs to change, we'll take that. But we have to sort of say, this is the type of board we'd like you to investigate, and one that um, can have the two functions that that are in here, or we can change those functions if we don't like them into something else. Okay, can, um, I, can I make a suggestion? So suggestions? there has to be a no. purpose. Can I, can yes. I? All right. Okay. All right. 
As far as the purpose goes, let's just build on what we already have. Ad hoc committee shall be created to establish, a, to consider establishing a human rights board uh, and to explore the other recommendations as previously presented in the stakeholders meeting on September 25th. 25th, yes. Well, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's broad, but at least it gives them a little flexibility. Yeah. All right? Um, and I would recommend that the ad hoc committee shall be comprised of sh uh, voluntarily uh, or optional uh, one or two members of the school committee. Um, or designees. Or designees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one or two members of the select board or designees. And, and follow the rest of this A, B, C, and D as it's written out. Who would appoint the uh, members of the non-governmental groups? That'd be the select board? Yeah, sure. the select. It's our ad hoc, so. Yeah. Okay. I think so. So, Vanessa, um, um, can we well, go to the second page, Bob? Sorry, still with us. Second page, okay. I action of item one. Um, I think, Vanessa, we could start with an ad hoc committee and then you uh, wanted to fill in some words. And let's... Uh, One or two members. Uh, so we can say up to. Um, yeah. Well, it's purpose. It's a uh, help establish a human rights board. Okay. Fine. Andy, hold on. Bob has a yep. Can I just ask a question? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, I'm not familiar with your policy by memory. 2.2.1, is that ad hoc committee? It's, it's 2.1 actually, Andy. Uh, oh, okay. Today. Well, I, my only point is, the I, I'm not saying you're adopting this language, but just to be clear, ad hoc committees do have a sunset clause. Yes. They are limited to yes. one year unless you extend them. Yeah, I mean, but I, there you've created one under this clause and made it not sound such. I just want to make sure you understand. No, 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 no. So, okay. the, the purpose is for them to, the ad hoc has a sunset clause. The purpose is to work on a, 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 a committee set up in a committee that okay, doesn't have a sunset clause. So. That's not what that says. Okay, we'll but I understand it. your yeah. changing yeah. it then. Okay. okay. Um, so, so, can I yes, continue? Go. Okay. Um, we will also, it, it will also include um, the superintendent or his designee, the town manager or his designee. Um, the library. Uh, all the boards we talked about last time. A representative from the library, uh, public <laughs> safety. I'm no pride of all. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. Please. I was hoping she would. Uh, public safety, yeah. I would include METCO. Right, METCO, religious leaders. Clergy. Oh. I mean, at this point, no, I, it's, it's getting a little big. <laughs> All right, Vanessa, I apologize. You need You're going to make me do it again, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Great. Here, let me type. Excellent. Okay. That's even better. Can I ask a question? Yes, John. Um, I, I think that Barry has got a motion on the floor. Yes. About an ad hoc committee yes. to study all the items in action items one through four and anything else that's related. Yes. Is that, is that essentially what you'd like yeah, to have? I, at this point, we're, though, we're fine tuning it because at the motion as it stands has no members. You have to have a composition clause. It needs to be comprised of. Yeah. You have to. But you have, to have a purpose. I, I and a purpose. Right. And, 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 I, and I think looking at, looking at establishing a human rights committee or board, however we well, so-called. All of these action <coughs> items and anything related <laughs> right. would, would cover okay. all so of that. So we have the purpose. We have the purpose. And then, right? The purpose would be to establish a broad look into these four action items. And it seems to me that if we, you know, had two select, two people from the select board, um, which is the way we normally do, mm -hmm. you know, subcommittees, mm -hmm. um, they could come up with all the fine tuning um, of the details of who to be invited and all of those things. And report back to us in a week or two. I think that's and so great. So now suddenly, then what you've done is simplified tonight into say, look, that we're going to do it. And I don't think there's a person at this table. Don't misinterpret my no vote to say that I somehow am not in support yeah. of us getting something done. Yeah. Okay. Because I am in support gotcha. of getting something done. Yeah. How we get there, as Barry has mentioned earlier, I don't know what it looks like at the other end. And I'm not exactly sure, you know, what the steps are once we get rolling down the road. Yeah. But I do think that the motion that Barry has put out here to create a, to create an ad hoc committee 
meaning that it is temporary. Yep. Okay. It has a maximum shelf life of one year unless we do something other than that. And of course, we all want to act more quickly than that. Right. You know, and I do know that typically in a subcommittee, that's two select, two people from the select board. They could work all these details out, report back to us. If we need a special meeting, we could call a meeting, you know, Thursday. And I, we can bring a meeting together for, yep. you know, a yep. single agenda item yeah. at any time. We've done and it before. And yeah, the, nimble, done it before. the nimbleness that you mentioned earlier yeah. is true. Yeah. So I, I think let's, let's not make this more difficult than it needs right. to be. Let's just simplify it, get it moving down the road, and then on we go. So uh, the per we need to have the, the purpose of the ad hoc committee and then yeah. appoint it. So the purpose, Barry, could, could you repeat the purpose? Well, the purpose was to look at action items um, one through four, um, w you know, which, which in, you know, include potentially uh, establishing a human rights board um, and the composition, you know, to be determined by, you know, I mean, the sub, I mean, I assume we'll, this motion passes, we'll appoint a subcommittee and then the subcommittee will work it, we'll work that out and report back and then we'll yeah. vote on it. I mean, I don't, I don't think we're going to, we're going to wordsmith it tonight. No. Because, I mean, we have another, other stuff to do. Yes. But if that motion passes, then we have a subcommittee of the of the select board yeah. that then goes and works on implementing what we just discussed. Yeah. Can I recommend everyone take a look at the yep. section highlighted in yellow? It indicates the purpose, the sunset, and the composition. Okay. Have I missed anyone? Ad hoc committee shall be created to help establish the human rights board and explore recommendations that resulted from the stakeholders meeting on September 25th, 2018. This ad hoc committee shall be comprised of, and so first, are people comfortable with that purpose? How about shall consist of? <laughs> Comprise gets misused. Okay, shall consist of. Sure. I do not. Please include clergy. Yeah. So are we good on the purpose? Okay. Uh, you you want to add an edu educational component to that, or is that premature? Will that I come think that's later? That on? will be up to them. Okay. Okay. So, great. Um, the membership that it will be comprised consisted okay. of. Consisted. Consist of. Um, the first one, two, two members of the school committee. Um, pending the school committee's approval, if they if they would like to participate. Um, and I understand that they have their hand full, hands full as well. Two members of the select board or our designees. I, I just wanted to provide some flexibility in case two of us don't want to do it, or, you know. And then um, two members of the HRAC, three members from non-governmental groups that focus on human rights. That appointed, could be appointed by the select board. Can I suggest that? Yeah, all of this appointed. What's happening here is, mm -hmm. we're we are allowed to invite people to committees. Yes. We can't legislate the composition of the committee. We would invite, mm -hmm. I, there's nothing wrong with having all of those people invited, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. they should be invited. And I would hope they'd take us up on it. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to keep us straight here yeah. about what we can, what yeah. we're empowered to do and what we're not empowered. What we can appoint in the ad hoc committee and how do, how do we go about that? Is, is the have, question. I have a recommendation. Yep. Bear with me. Not my computer. Make it more invitational. Um. Oh, that's a good suggestion, Dan. What was it? He said make it um, more invitational. You know, include the word invitational somehow. Um, what about this? Yeah, your, your other ad hoc committees do it. I don't have the words offhand, but you, you don't want to paint yourself into a corner and yeah. say who the members are and then yeah. you can't find them. Yes, so okay. It's, it's like but the following members shall uh, I don't know to be invited and shall be invited to okay. participate in the ad hoc committee, something like that. Uh, that would be up. Uh, Vanessa? Yes. So this ad hoc committee, um, uh, what did you say again, Dan? Um, Shall be invited to participate. 
in the ad hoc committee. The following, the, the following shall be um, uh, like members shall be invited to participate in this ad hoc committee, or the following individuals, or something like that. Or not? No, that's not right. Um, just the following. People, <laughs> representatives, um, will shall be invited mm -hmm. to this ad hoc committee. <laughs> That's good. Excellent. So. Um, I think we, we do need to figure out where we want to, who we want to invite, where we want to draw. Well, I, I thought we right? were going to have the subcommittee of the select board kind of just work on this. I, I, no, I, I would rather the five of us decide who's going to be on the ad hoc committee. Because, Elaine, I, I'd like the entire board to, to, to agree on the makeup of, of, of who we're going to invite. All the individuals you want to invite? No. It's the, as written, I, I don't, you know, I want the entire board to be happy with the fact that we invite two members of the school committee. And if I may, it yes. sounds like a two-step process. One, yeah. we as a board need to agree that this is the ad hoc committee, this is the language we want to use. And then the second part is which of our members, of which of our five, which two will serve on this. So it's a two-step process. Because that's just going to invite all the rest of the people. No, right. no. That, I, I want, I'd like well, us. So that's, that we first, we have to agree to this. Right. Yes. Then we assign the other two. <laughs> then we assign us two, whichever of us. Right. So we'll be on it. Okay. But this is this exists as is. That that's our that's our that's our rubric. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is what we as a board are agreeing to. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, he's not voting against me. Oh, can we vote? Yeah. So yeah. there's a motion on the table. <laughs> I, I think I it was seconded. seconded. Yeah. Um well, any any more discussion on the purpose of the ad hoc committee and uh, the pr proposed so invitational makeup. So it's what's in yellow we're voting on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. We, we, got, I, we got to keep it to a board conversation right now. Um, I'm sorry. You got to get the town Bob. manager. Oh, oh, bye, Bob. You moved. Yeah. Thank you. The idea there was to separate in the people that we would like to be included, but getting a dozen people in the room might prove challenging. So this was the point made earlier about sort of overcommitting. I mean, I would I would assume that these folks would have a vote. Um, right. I mean, not the town manager or the superintendent per se, but um, that anybody in the room who's on the committee gets to vote. Yeah. So It just adds confusion, I think. Okay. Better? Yes. Um, and then you've got the sunset, right? And, and, um, I, I, I would like to make us an amendment because it's very hard to get, if you invite all these people and they accept, it's trying to get a meeting date who will come to be in next March. Well, so okay. how, how do we? Yeah, let's just get it done. Right? If, people are, if people really care about this, yeah. they'll prioritize it and they'll come to a meeting. So I'm not worried about that. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah, okay. 
that, that's right. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, never uh, ignore my ignore my uh, proposal. Uh, yes, but can I, I just say, I mean, Elaine brought something up a little while ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, many of us watched um, our CASA come together, came to life in a very, I mean, a very short period of time because there were highly motivated people. And you know something? Yeah. It's now ten years later, and you know, and meetings aren't a problem. I mean, we always have a quorum. I mean, occasionally we might not. Mm -hmm. And it's made up of all the people that you might actually. It's it's yeah. almost that that group. Right. That, uh, yeah, we I had withdrew, a glaring I problem in my, my motion. called substance abuse. It is still a problem, yeah. and we rose up and did something about it. We now have another glaring problem. I think that that can find its way, you know, to do the same thing. I think Elaine mentioned this early on, and it's. It's kind of all those people. Yes. I think we just need to, you know, it's ad hoc. It's not going to be the end game. Yep. And Barry's continuing to say that, and I think he's absolutely right about yeah. that. You got, we're not, the five of us are not going to get this figured out here. I, I agree. And in fact, that's why I proposed the ad hoc committee um, so in, we have in the original <laughs> statement. So, so can we vote it? Second, yeah. no. Any discussion? Um, no more discussion? Any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay. Um, and so I think we can um, skip the other three because the ad hoc okay. committee is going to address Do you want to appoint our two members? Can um, I say another something? Yes, you may. I really enjoy this meeting. Uh, what is this? Uh, the intent young woman who spoke about the parent, she'll be in. She'll have it.
Thank you, Dr. Ornstein. That's my thank you for that. that is, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, didn't someone tell you never to volunteer? Yeah, I'm a volunteer. You do it, though. And I think it's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. If it should happen, I don't know. You know, some effort has to be put into it. Not by the school, uh, not by the select board. That's not our job. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. But I'm just very glad to hear that somebody thought of it because I believe that that is a linchpin between the community and the school. Thank you, Dr. Ornstein. <laughs> Um, so, we need to pick two members. Um, I feel that for myself, the, the, the time that it takes to be chair uh, really precludes me from being on this committee. Do we have two volunteers? Barry? Okay, I guess it'll be me. Thank you, Vanessa. All right, and thank you, Barry, and thank you all um, for doing that. Um, I'd like to, uh, do we need a proposal to accept those, appoint those two members? Sure, we do. Yeah. So moved. Um, okay, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Okay, Barry and, and Vanessa. Um, we all took a st step back and they, they, they stayed forward, so. Um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, um, if it were easy, this would have been done 20 minutes ago, okay? I think we needed to have these kind of discussions, trying to kind of break the mold. So while it seemed a little messy and frustrating to people out there, I think this discussion happened exactly the way it needed to happen, so. Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for participating. I really appreciate it. And, and thanks to the board. Um, L Linda, briefly, because we got a, we were way behind. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to thank you, Andy, for bringing this to the table and pushing it through the table and engaging everybody. I want to thank all the select board, but I also would like to express a hope that proactive collaboration will not wait until this ad hoc committee forms another organization, that there are things we need to do now. And so I hope that it will be on the agenda on both, I'm speaking as a citizen, but on both the school committee board and the select board and other boards. I know the library is doing the community conversations, the Pulse of Reading, there's one tomorrow, there's still time, call the library in the morning. Um, but there are other things going on and that um, we all can make sure continue to happen even while the process of the ad hoc committee is gearing up. Yeah. So it's not a problem that's going away and it needs our attention and action now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. And I'm sure Vanessa and Barry will have this wrapped up, oh, yeah. appointed and wrapped up by our next meeting. Thank you. Well done. Um, so I just wanna, at this point, we're gonna switch back to a regular flow of the meetings. Um, first, we're gonna hear reports from select board members. Uh, I think uh, yeah. we've heard I from the, I can the public. And I can yes, yes. Thank you. Five minutes. Yeah, take five minutes. Th thank you, uh, Dr. Orenstein. Thank you, my good.
Okay, let's just, uh, the audience has dwindled, so um, I'll skip some of the introductions. Um, I guess I would ask for um, reports from the board. John? I have nothing. You have nothing? Dan? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I became aware earlier today, uh, thanks to uh, Phil Rushworth of RCTV, of a proposed FCC rule that uh, threatens community television programs. And this is an article from, uh, uh, by a gentleman in the Hanover Wicked local, local newspaper. Uh, get ready to say goodbye to some of your local cable channel broadcasts of government meetings, elections, and other town events. The FCC is moving toward adopting a new rule that community t television groups say would gut funding for public educational and government PEG channels. The loser, if that ends up happening, will be the local taxpayer, the local cable subscriber, and the everyday citizens <coughs> who rely on access to public information as provided through these programs, said Jeffrey C. Beckwith, Executive Director and CEO of the Massachusetts Municipal Association. The proposed rule moving very quickly toward regulatory approval would allow major cable companies such as Verizon Fios, Comcast Xfinity, and RCN to limit the amount of spending for community programming that has been negotiated as part of their licensing agreements as we have just done in this town. The FCC is accepting public comments on the rule change until uh, the end of business tomorrow, Wednesday, November 14th. Excuse me. <coughs> My request to the board tonight, and I'm kind of invoking this under the 48 hour rule, if this is yes. reasonably foreseen, yep. is that you authorize me to work with staff, probably uh, either Bob or Matt Cornellis, to uh, put together a response. Uh, timely response to be sent to the FCC by close of business tomorrow. And I've indicated a potential form letter that this response might take. It's a lot of fill in the blank stuff, but I'm uh -huh. sure it won't take us a long time to put that together. So I would ask for a, a motion authorizing that. So okay. moved. <laughs> <laughs> One second. Time. second. So a motion by Vanessa and a second by Barry. Um, uh, any discussion on that? Thank you for doing this, Dan. Sure. Yeah, thank you for doing that, Dan. All in favor? All right. Really That's appreciate all I it. Okay. We'll save the uh, Recreation Committee for the agenda. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, <coughs> yes. Uh, CPDC meeting on the 5th, they had a site plan review for the Meadowbrook <coughs> Golf Club. Uh, there's various issues under consideration, but the main one, oh, I need the other mic. Oh, oh, there's no one in the audience. Oh, it's way down here. Um, uh, the main one uh, that may come before us is to consider limiting parking on street, on Grove Street. Um, so that may come before us. Um, he'll talk about uh, Barry, uh, Dan and I met as part of the VAST. That'll be talked about later. Yeah. I met with a group of seniors in the community um, and they suggested us considering um, creating a committee to unite the various uh, groups um, that discuss aging in town and to provide recommendations um, to the select board on actions we can take to make Reading a more age friendly town. Um, so something that we can consider for the future. I think that was it. Right. Thank you. That's all. Barry? Um, just a couple things really quick. Um, I, 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 uh, I'm sure everybody's heard what's happened in California. Um, there's a town of 26,000 people, same size as ours, that's completely destroyed. And I thought about kind of driving, when I was driving over here, about like, well, you know, as a board, we're going to figure out things about liquor licenses and what we're going to do about human rights when their select board is thinking about rebuilding their town. So I just wanted to kind of keep make that sort of as a reference point about how lucky we are to be able that we're able to actually do the kind of things that we did tonight because as a town, exactly the same population as ours that is completely and utterly destroyed. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing uh, that I want to talk about is um, I did represent the board at the Veterans Day, um, the Veterans Day ceremony. And once again, Kevin Bowmiller, you know, he really is a gift. Uh, to this town and put on a tremendous ceremony. It was out on the common 
It was cold, um, but everybody did show up, and um, we honored a number of different veterans, and I just want to say their names really quickly um, from different, uh, different wars. Arthur Hubbard was from World War II. Um, he was probably one of the few people that actually did D-Day twice. He did it the day before in reconnaissance to try to find the lieutenant, to find the drop point, got back, and then did D-Day again, so, um, and lived to tell about it. Um, Lawrence McHugh served two years in Korea. Uh, Lawrence Leahy did two, I think, two tours of duty, um, U.S. Army, two tours of duty in Vietnam. And Mike Lee, um, who's um, also with the Army, did a tour in the Persian Gulf. But Mike is also a Reading police officer. So those are the four, um, what uh, we call heroes in our neighborhood. And then um, we had a tremendous lunch mm -hmm. over at the Masonic. And um, so it was just great. People came out, it was cold to really honor our veterans and, and, and Kevin did a really amazing job. So- Mary, uh, you did too, and thank you for that speech. Oh, yeah. It was an excellent great. speech. Oh, thank great. you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then just lastly, really quick, we're not gonna meet before um, May, uh, November 29th. Um, which is shot the block. And I wanted just to point out um, that the town has put together these maps, Reading Downtown Business Map, which will be in all the different um, shops about just sort of all the services and stores that um, comprise our downtown businesses. So um, this is a great little thing. If you're down in one of the shops, pick this up. Really, um, it's a great little handy guide. So. Um, May 20, uh, May 29th, I wish it was May. November 29th, um, shop the block, you know, um, shop Reading and shop often. So that's all I have. Uh, thanks, Barry, and thanks again for picking up the, um, the, the do in that, the, the, you know, the um, Veterans Day. No, no it was really, an honor really, to do it. really appreciate it. Um, I just have a couple things to report. Um, one, I, I checked with town council about Robert's rules that were invoked at our last meeting, and he stressed to me that um, we, we, Robert's rules do not govern, govern select board meetings, and and he, okay. he would and he um, what rules do? <laughs> he, he said that um, the rules that we have set in our policy. Um, do so, and he also, he strongly re advises against using them because um, they're very complicated. Um, and I, you know, I can have him write up something for us if we would like. But for instance, uh, the agenda and the the, um, the timeline of the agenda um, is is approved by the chair. Um, and and it, Robert's rules can't be used to overturn that accord. Excuse me. That's quite I, I vehemently disagree with that. With, okay. Well, <laughs> well I'll, I'll have um, you know reach out to town council. And, 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 yeah. We have town council is here. Do you want to ask her about her views? Where is he? It's no, it's, she it's a she. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for Ray. You're not Ray. Uh, we moved to take a, a agenda item out of order, and the board, a majority of the board, concurred. That are you saying that is not permitted? What Ray said is that's fine. Robert's rule is a different issue. No. He, he said he doesn't know if the board has ever adopted Robert's rules. Okay. Bill Brown may know that. Yeah. And, and he would strongly, as Andy said, strongly suggest you do not adopt. But we often take, I, but, but if you don't adopt it, what, how are you going to run the meeting? That's a full stop. But then the board okay. is free to rearrange agenda items by majority vote. And we could go by town meeting rule. time also. That's, that's another one. I, I don't, Dan, you may know whether Robert's rules were adopted. I have no idea. We couldn't find any. I know about uh, one tenth of them. There's yeah. so many of them. Yeah. All right, I, point taken. Okay. Um, but the action was not inappropriate. She yeah. said it's it's not you know what we did not what we did. There's nothing illegal about it. Doesn't in yeah. That's it, not what you said a minute ago. It, it does not right. It doesn't um, uh, invalidate anything we did uh, following. So I made sure of that. And there's no open meeting law violations or anything like that. Um, the other thing is that um, uh, uh, you know uh, this. Who suggested these liaisons to the develop, development uh, sites in, in Reading? Because they are challenging and difficult. Um, I've been working with um, 
it's to the residents, the developers, um, the builders, at, and um, uh, the assistant town manager mostly um, to address some safety concerns um, that, have, that are coming up at a, what is a very busy intersection at Lincoln Prescott. And um, so, and they are also operating under a permit from the ZBA. Um, I looped in Vanessa, and we shall be meeting on Thursday <coughs> to try to work out some uh, communication, improved communication protocols um, for that, f so that residents' con concerns can be heard quickly by somebody in town hall and and uh, and and respond to. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, so Bob does not have a town manager's report. We move on now to re review the Reading Softball Le Little League's gift for Sturgis Park. And um, I Dan, believe I, I could I could start Dan, out, Mr. Chairman, if you like. Yes, uh, please. No. I, I pass the meeting over to you. Dan. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Emily Sisson, uh, chair of the work committee, I see is here in the audience too. If you have further questions. Uh, the group met tonight at 6.30. They had a quorum present. Uh, <coughs> Bob Hayes of the, uh, the, the ladies, the girls softball league made a presentation on the plan uh, for putting up uh, new dugouts and other, uh, and replacing the backstop at Sturgis Park. Uh, Tim Higgins was present, the fellow doing the project. Uh, the uh, concerns that had been expressed last time, uh, by the way, the neighbors were there too and they were extremely supportive. But I think it's a good thing that this did go to rec committee because there was a little contention in the placement of a fence on the third base side. Mm -hmm. uh, the soccer folks wanted that fence as short as possible to allow free use of that space for both the soccer field on uh, just you know heading down toward left field. Mm -hmm. And there's also a practice area behind that that they didn't want to see interfered with. Uh, softball folks wanted the fence there for the safety of the observers. So. There was a little bit of a tussle there, but at the end of the day, uh, there was a, an agreement reached. The following motion was passed. Uh, John Parks made the motion to approve the project as presented by the Reading, uh, so is it Reading Softball Little League, John? Yes, Reading Softball. Pending conversations with both RSSL and the Reading United Soccer uh, League and empowering the uh, rec administrator to make a final decision on uh, on the third base fence dimensions to ensure that the field remains multi-purpose. Uh, the vote passed five to zero, so that has been adopted. And I'm, I'm happy that that did go to them because they did have some expertise and insights that I, I don't think Great. this board could have. Great, thanks for going and to that we're meeting. we're still timely for the construction, so yeah. that's a good Thanks answer. for going to that meeting. Emily, thanks for uh, your you know, cooperation and help. I think we've already approved this. We uh, have. So can I, I want yes. to, Dan, yeah. thank you for, for sure. reporting in on that. Our approval was contingent on the Recreation Committee's approval expiring right. today. Right. Their approval is currently contingent on final approval uh -huh. by their admins. So should we should so, extend it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make a motion to extend the select board's conditional approval of the Reading Softball Little League gift of improvements to Sturgis Park to November 27th, 2018. So it's really need much more time than they need. Okay. I'll yeah. second, yeah, but I would okay. want to hear some need, discussion on that. We need too. to have some discussion. Okay, about that. seconded and, they, and I dis was, discussion. So, so, okay. so um, I was informed that they anticipate this being finalized within the next couple of days. So I, I sort of went overly conservative on the amount of time mm -hmm. that they need. Okay, John? so I'm, I'm trying to understand exactly what that amend, amendment to our original thing means. Here's what I know. Um, they are locked and ready to do this the minute that the Recreation Committee signs off the building permit, which was kind of a belt and suspenders step that they took to be <coughs> sure that all parties were concerned. Right. Here's the reality. They're ready to go to work tomorrow. So, you know, we've got to get to the bottom of this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have... You know, we had two inches of rain today, and we got a hard frost tonight. Yeah. The frost line is going in tonight. 
So this has got to get moving, yes. you know, soon. And, and I want to recognize the Recreation Committee and their staff's um, efforts to move this along as quickly as possible, um, given when they found out about it. And, and I appreciate their efforts, so thank you for that. Um, they have already said that this will be approved by, finalized by their staff in the next couple of days. And once that's done, the town side can pick it up and run with it, and the permit will be signed. Emily, if you want to jump in, feel free. I can't quite hear you. Tip, tip the thing up. Yep. Got it? Yes. I'm going to say my name is John Street, chair of the record committee. Um, the only reason that it didn't, we didn't have like a hard yes to my John is um, at our last meeting, and last week, the record committee and the um, Reading News Software representative were under the impression that the fencing would end at the third base dugout, and they had, um, and when Bob Green presented it tonight, there was still. So we wanted to scale back to the third base bag, and they wanted to say 17 feet, we wanted to say third base bag, it was a semantic thing. Uh, fully anticipate Jenna, Bob Hayes of Reading Trump, a little lady, Mike Shee um, of Reading, Reading United Soccer Club um, coming together tomorrow for stay, and then once they just get the, the final number, it's just a matter of, it's semantics at this point. We're on board, the neighbors are on board, everyone's really happy. We just didn't want to say, oh, call it 17 feet, and then have that 17 feet take away that soccer field. Uh, we're kind of in a, a crisis of the soccer field. As you know, we are having soccer field practices in the sure. softball fields right now. So um, to lose the field is really not okay. So we didn't want to say 17 feet, have it extend two feet into what they need. We just wanted everybody to go to the field, say, this is the spot, mark it, boom, done. Um, and Tim, Yep. Um, he expressed reservations because the plan that was presented tonight had that 42 feet fence, and he just wanted to make sure it was cool, okay, with the Reading Trauma Little League board, because that was the plan that they approved. Um, so he wanted to circle back with them in the morning to make sure that they were okay with that. So it's, it's all semantics. Everybody, in, in theory, was on board with, okay, we're just going to have a little bit shorter fence so that we're not even on soccer. I don't anticipate there being any more than a 24 hour delay in starting. And Jenna's already agreed to sign the delay for this and this, that number is So it sounds like, Emily, you guys empowered Jen to make the decision Jenna. on your behalf, which is great. Yep. And I understand, look, it's got, the fence got to get shorter. We've got to have multi purpose fields. I yep. totally get that. Yep. You know, I guess. You know, so I'm glad to hear that you've empowered her, and I really do appreciate the fact that you acted with as much speed as was humanly possible to get this done. Um, I'm wondering why we have to move our, because why are we moving it out two weeks? It's because we're not meeting again until December, so for whatever reason, in case there's some other hiccup that delays it again beyond tomorrow, our approval technically expires you, today. Is there a need for the approval to expire at all? And Actually, the, originally, it originally it was contingent upon was the, the rec committee it? doing it. Now the rec committee's we, done it. We, we put a date on it to make sure they'd act. It right. wasn't, I mean, our, our, the way that that original vote went was if the rec committee did not respond negatively, it would be a, we were, our, right. our vote was permanent. But their yes, vote... Sir. I, I, I just read it. But, the, yeah. but there, I mean, look, it, it's really just a matter of covering ourselves so that we don't get caught on a technical. Okay, I don't want to get hung up in the details, so, but I also don't want us to have to reconvene. I want this thing to get done. It sounds like the rec committees stood on their head to try to make that happen. And, and we're making sure that our vote is valid once they, once their admin is empowered to finalize it to sign it tomorrow. But I'm just concerned that if Jenna signs the building permit tomorrow, it's dated 114. Your original motion uh, stipulates that all this has to be done by 13. If that building permit is a day late, does that render your vote null and void? This is an abundance of caution. I, 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 get, I get what you, you both are saying. I'm just suggesting that. As I recall, the motion that we had the last time, mm -hmm. right. it expired. Ours was, yeah. ours was done 
without object. If we had no objection, it was right. ours was. Can, can we can we amend our motion to basically take the date out and just say contingent upon when that it's committee a, approval? When it's on the uh, yeah, that's I, I accept that's the friendly amendment. That's what I would do. Yeah. Okay, great. great. All right. This is the date is meaningless. Right. So that so that if Jen signs it tomorrow, yep. you guys can get the trucks in. Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. okay. So. We're, let's vote. Um, so we're the gifts, any, the any more discussion? Oh, hearing none. Um, would you like somebody like to repeat the motion or just amend it? Okay, make it. Say that we've amended it to uh, rec, rec committee approval. Uh, pending recreation committee approval. Well, that's been had. Uh, sign off by the administrator. Yeah. It's, con okay. I mean, that's what a one, six, one half dozen of the other. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Great. Amended. All in favor? All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for Thank you. that yeah. gift. Thank yeah. you, Emily. <laughs> um, Mr. Higgins. Okay. Emily, did you uh, convene a, uh, early earlier meeting of the rec committee to get this done? We had originally our meeting was scheduled for this evening. We had a meeting last Wednesday, the sixth, at seven p.m. We had a forum of five. Yeah. Um, where we met with Mr. Hayes from Red Top Lovely, mm -hmm. um, and the consensus at that meeting was, you know, the process has always been. Uh, we inform neighbors of what's going on. We talk to other leagues that use utilize the field. We hear that there are no uses. Um, and, you know, we really wanted to be cognizant of the fact that we tried to be really good papers, and yeah. we really wanted to have that public uh, input time. We didn't think that anyone was objective of the project, especially since the nearest of Hunter is involved with the league, uh, the mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in, for the sake of doing things the way we've always done them, and transparency, and be good neighbors, and think, hey, a bunch of trucks are going to come and do some stuff. Um, so we rushed with the 48 hours that we had um, to have a public meeting. So we had two meetings from our meeting to get this all done. Please th thank your members for acting so quickly and, and rearranging your schedule. Thanks. All right, great. Thanks. Um, um, Bill, we, we got to move on. Um, uh, uh, Bob, can you take over for the Liquor license. We're doing the boards. No, we still have to do the boards. Yeah. Ask, ask appointments. Yeah, appointments. Oh, um, I skipped over that. I apologize. We public comment. Um, so we never did public comment. <laughs> oh, we never did. Public or public the town manager report. He didn't have he didn't one. Have he didn't have one. one. Okay, I missed um, one. Public right. comment public period. Is <laughs> retroactively, <laughs> Bill. Who, who but Bill? <laughs> softball field that's being yeah. uh, proposed this evening. Yeah. And the, the summary precedent for that because Shaft Field was named after a veteran in Indonesia. So Hart Field Hall is named after a team player that was a veteran too. So mm -hmm. I think it's the precedent there. I think it may be using both fields with very agreeable work as well as named. So I think that may be the direction the board may wish to take that was true. Thank you, Bill. Um, I, I, we we um, can't take it up tonight, but I will try to get it on the agenda as soon as possible. Yeah, I, okay. I, we just have to be careful. You don't unname things. Unnamed. So, for example, yes. you know, the Moscarella Ballpark at Morton Field mm -hmm. did not take away Morton Field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not sure there are three softball fields at Birch Meadow. Um, I, I don't know that their name. I don't think any of them have names. Correct. But 
Sturgis. Sturgis Park has a name. Has a name. Yeah. You know. So yeah. I mean, th this is something that's got to be. Yeah. Looked at. We'll, we'll work it out at, a, at another meeting. <coughs> um, okay. The Vask. Um, okay, happy to take over there. Yeah. I, I just. I. Um, we'll let you. Which you. We'll let you take over. I do need to note that uh, we have had. I got information that we have had a resignation from the Reading Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there, we just recently appointed a te tenant representative board member, um, it? Uh, and uh, it is Ms. Beatrice Perkins, mm -hmm. and she she uh, has informed the board that she must resign. Um, no, it didn't sound like any anim animosity. She really enjoyed what she was doing. Um, she didn't give a reason. So we, we need to um, yep. reappoint somebody to that position. And that's, a t that's basically somebody at the Tanner, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. Uh, right. uh, I'm the liaison to the Reading Housing Authority. We, we still are waiting. Uh, there was a candidate for Sailor and Soldiers Graves who could not make that meeting. We will schedule another meeting to accommodate that person and hopefully we'll and make have. the appointment. Plus, I'm anticipating there will be a, uh, a uh, another resignation on the Board of Cemetery Trustees. Uh, John Costigan's wife is presumably going with him. Yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah. They're, so, they're gone. So, yeah. so. yep. Yeah, um, so she has de facto resigned and left. We'll Okay. That's a lot too. All right. Uh, we had, the good news is we had uh, two candidates we interviewed for the Board of Cemetery Trustees, both eminently qualified. Uh, one was uh, actually uh, Frank uh, Driscoll's daughter, Caitlin uh, Salmon. We we're very happy she put her candidacy in. Uh, Caitlin and Carl McFadden, long, long time. Uh, raconteur around town. I think he's known pretty well. We also had two great candidates for the Board of Health, Eleanor Shankoff, who had a nine-page resume. Yeah. Very, yeah. very, very impressive. And Lara Romanofsky. So we're, uh, I'm, we're prepared to go ahead with those appointments. Who was uh, also pretty well qualified. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'll read the four motions. Yep. Uh, move that the board appoint Carl McFadden to a full member on the Cemetery Board of Trustees with a term ending June 30th, 2020. Second. Move, thank you. Move that the board appoint Caitlin Salmon to a full member on the Cemetery Board of Trustees with a term ending June 30th, 2019. Oh, do it all for one. Okay. Yep. Move that the board appoint Eleanor Shonkoff to a full member on the Board of Health with a term ending June 30th, 2019. Move that the board appoint Bar Romanowski to an associate member on the Board of Health with a term ending June 30th, 2020. Now I'll second. Discussion? Um, just, just really quick. I, I was incredibly impressed by the um, quality of the resumes for uh, the Board of Health. And so I, just a question, um, how, how did they come to us? Did they just read the paper and find that there was an opening? Were they recruited? Or Was one of them an acquaintance of yours, Andy? I don't know them. I, think, uh, one of them I don't know them. I don't know them. Well, whatever it is, I'm grateful. Uh, two very new people. Uh, yeah, I know. I noticed yeah. that. So, yeah. uh, so I, I think they were looking for a place know, to plug in. Everyone, everyone I talked to at the supermarket or uh, who I knew, I said, you know, we're, we need uh, another board of health member. Right. No, I mean, because so. we have been talking about it. So I, I just thought that that was actually good that they that they raised their hands. The only other question I have, I mean, they're both terrific. They both bring different skill sets to the table. Yeah. Was there any reason why you chose? One for the alternate uh, versus the full, or was it just a timing thing, or flip a coin? Uh, I mean, I, 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 they're both great. I'm glad they're on, but I just was curious what the thinking so was. So we, I mean, it was a pretty quick discussion. Dan, feel free to jump in, but uh, essentially, Eleanor had a more professional. Yep. Um, her professional experience was more directly in line with what the Board of Health would be doing. Um, her her professional experience is in public health, um, right. and so. Mm -hmm. Okay. She just seemed to, they, they were both great. Love to have them both. Yeah. Just a slight edge there for Alan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have a full complement three full members and two associates. No, yes. members. That's just great. Is a good. first on yeah. the Board of Health. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw that too. A, d a difficult choice. Laura certainly will add a lot to the board as well. Absolutely. She, she does work in public health, um, it looks like. Yeah. And um, so that's, that's great. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right. <coughs> now, can I ask for liquor licenses, Bob? Sure. 
All right, call you. We have Ivrier, Ivrier from town council, the deputy, and uh, lieutenant detective. Um, so the board knows you're meeting a little bit earlier in November than some um, past November meetings. Applicants must apply on or before, it's either November 30th or December 1st. Uh, we have 20 out of 25 that have complete applications, two that have incomplete applications, one that's in the mail, and two that we haven't traced down yet. So tonight we'll ask you to approve the 20 that we know are good, and we'll bring this back to the board, presumably for some or all of the remaining five in one of your December meetings. Um, there will also be some other actions the board needs to take um, regarding liquor licenses. One will, move, I believe, require a public hearing as a transfer. Um, but I think the reason that I asked Ivory to come tonight um, is to discuss that Meadowbrook issue. Um, so we just put that front and center. The board has seen various emails. I've talked to the abutter. I've talked to the folks at Meadowbrook that are in the back. So I think it might be helpful if Ivrya can first address his concerns and when they would be appropriately, appropriately brought to this board. Great. Yeah, um, thanks, Bob. If you're gonna discuss Meadowbrook, I, I, uh, I think I need to recuse myself. My kids work there. My two youngest worked there all summer last last summer, and I think uh, one of them intends to try to work there next summer. So I think it's best if I leave, leave the room, if, if you don't mind. Okay. All right? Just give me a ring when you're done, if you don't mind. You're <laughs> <laughs> trapped. I'm Ivrea, for those I haven't met. Um, so I think first, what Bob said, what's before you tonight is really license renewal. So under the statute, if an applicant timely submits their license renewal, the board is required to approve it. The only thing the board can consider is did the authorized, did an authorized representative sign the license and is the application co complete? Um, questions about the uh, adequacy of the license, those types of questions are not appropriate during a license renewal process. So that's the first thing. Um, what's before you tonight is just the renewal. As you've seen in the emails and, and abutters letters, there's some question as to whether the board should be treating this license, which is a club license, different from veterans licenses. That's something the board could definitely consider doing. It's not done right now in your policy, but your policy does give you the ability to consider each license um, as a separate and unique license. So if certain conditions may be more appropriate for one license over another license, just because it's not specified in your policy doesn't mean you can't impose those conditions. During any license hearing, whether it's a club license or a section 12 restaurant license, you always can consider what factors are at play and how the board wants to proceed in regards to that specific license. Turning to Meadowbrook, um, they've just gone through a whole process, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, with the planning or CPCD and have their site plan approval. The site plan approval contemplates that the certain hours of operation. Those hours of operation differ from the hours of operation that are in their liquor license. If they were to serve alcohol outside the hours specified in their site plan approval, it would inherently be a violation of their liquor license because one condition of their liquor license is that they comply with all permits that they hold. So even though it looks like an inconsistency, the permit that's just been issued to them is incorporated in their liquor license anyways. Yeah, so Eventually, Meadowbrook will come before you to apply for an alteration of premises. Basically what they're gonna say is, we're changing how our floor plan is laid out, so we need to amend our liquor license. And during that process, they have the ability, or the board even has the ability to reduce their hours to be in complete conformity with their site plan approval so that we're looking at no inconsistency between the liquor license and the site plan approval. But I just want the board to be assured that 
starting January 1st or whenever they become fully operational, they are bound by the terms of that site plan approval. So they really can't operate outside those hours, no matter what the liquor license might say on its face. But the liquor license that we're looking at tonight, that, that whole discussion may not come into play until next year. I'm Correct. Yet, I mean, the project is, that's not gonna be blinking, it's done. I mean, that's right. a massive project you guys are doing, I know. So, I mean, so tonight's consideration <laughs> this is just Correct. Go strictly Tonight's based on go a renewal in a right. timely way. Exactly, and as I started, if they submitted their renewal application timely, which they have, and an authorized representative has signed it, which I've been told they have, then the board doesn't have any discretion. They have to grant the renewal. This is what could occur in the future when they apply for an alteration of premises or if the board decides to take further action. Okay. Thank you. So with this regular, uh, I guess I'm the chair. Can I ask a question while we have you here? Yeah. Don't, this is real quick. We don't currently have any beer and wine licenses in our, kind of our bag of licenses. In your quota? Um, we don't, right? I don't think we do. I think that's right. You don't have your own? I don't think so. We don't have any out. We have beer and wine. Um, so Do you mean beer and wine only? Yeah. Yeah. So the, so the question is, um, the question I'm asking you, because mm -hmm. we've got you here, and yeah, yeah. I'm trying to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, I have at least heard, uh, maybe some of the others have, from uh, some of our convenience store owners. Yep. Is there any possibility? If we were to want to do that, mm -hmm. how would we go about it? Would we petition the, you know, the liquor board? And so I'd have to look at the history of how Reading adopted Chapter 138, but in general, communities have beer and wine in addition to all alcohol. So it'd be unique if you didn't have beer and wine. It's in my head that we That, we that you don't. don't. Okay, so there's one way to do it would be that uh, through the special act process. Yeah. Um, it's pretty simple and the state legislature tends to grant them. It would probably be helpful to, because that is gonna show up. I mean, I'm just okay. telling you, there's several of them that have raised that topic. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, okay. and so that may, and I've said I, I don't know the real answer. I don't think we have them, but okay. um, we can look into it. Yeah, I think yeah. we should look into that. Okay. Okay. So, just a quick note that um, Bob asked me to add was that the detective division did conduct compliance checks again this year with a 100% success rate for the establishments that had been checks. Um, I believe that one of the clubs was not open at the time. Of the um, operation. Perfect. Thank you. Great. So, are there motions? Uh, move that the, that the select board approve all the alcoholic package store liquor licenses for HT Reading Liquors, Raksha, Jay and Ricky, Anstasi Brookline, Kajal and Kevin, Pamplemousse. Move to suspend the reading of the motion. Thank you. <laughs> it's before us. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's four zero. Just note that the chairman has um, recused himself right. on this. So, um, can you bring? Thank you. Anybody want to go grab them? I think. I just want to ask you a question. We no. haven't done Meadowbrook yet. I feel like I'm in another country. Oh, I thought Meadowbrook's done. No. No. no Meadowbrook's for a special reading for everything. Um, We're just next motion. Oh, there's a bunch. Yep. All right. Okay. Got three. Um, <laughs> They're in bundles. Okay, I see. Uh, move the select board approve the all alcoholic club liquor licenses for Meadowbrook Golf Home Building Reading Veterans Association. Move to suspend further reading. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? 4 0. Move that the select board approve the all alcoholic restaurant liquor licenses for Anthony's Coal Fired Pizza of Reading. Move to suspend the Thank reading. God. Second. Second. <laughs> um, any, any discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Okay, thank yes. you. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the last thing is just minutes. Yep. I don't have anything. Hold so. on. So, is there a motion to? Well, let's wait till the leader comes back. Well, at least someone make the motion. 
uh, move that we approve the meeting minutes for the meeting on September 25th, 2018. Second. Any edits? I don't know. I don't know. And did you have any um, additions to the minutes of 10 2? Oh, wait, did I, I'm sorry. Are we on 10 9 25 2? Is no, I'm sorry, 9 25. My apologies. Give me a minute to find. Um, so 6A1. Yep. Right? Sec to pull it up. Do you remember what they were, Andy? I do. I just um, have to pull up the document and remind. Okay, here we go. Um, SB packet 1113. I would just stop uh, on page 33. Uh, let's see what that is. Packet. Uh, Jamie Michaels, should we uh, address her as Reverend Jamie Michaels? Yes. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. 684. Yep. 684. Six, yep. A few, few paragraphs down. Okay. It's opening. It, is Heather McLean's name spelled right? I think it's M C L uh, E A N. I think there's not a second C in there. Okay. Yep. And the L is capitalized. Oh, okay. So it's M, M lower C, F capital L. Got it. E A N. Okay, here we go. Um, so 6A1, no comment. 6A2, uh, minor thing. Uh, under, uh, goes with Ms. Alvarado agreed, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Friedman requested, blah, blah, blah. We treat it before it actually gets done. Not actual, small yeah, thing. Um, I don't know uh, how the rest of the board feels, but the la uh, lower down on page 682, um, we used the word uh, exclaimed uh, to a, a apply to a resident's comment. Do, do we, is that a, is that Com it commented, stated? Com said. Commented, I think would be more neutral. Opined. Opined. <laughs> opined. <laughs> opined is fine. Um, would, like you, opined. would you mind changing that to opined? <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's a Halsey word, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it my own, though. I stole it from him. Mm. Um, so, b b b 6A3. Um, under the stakeholders meeting, which we will no longer call the stakeholders Thank you, meeting. Mr. Chair. Um, uh, good point, Barry. Um, it says under Talia Shore, mm -hmm. um, she noted, um, I'm sorry, Rebecca Lieberman spoke. Okay. And we stopped calling these incidents out as graffiti because they're more than that. At some point, she said, um, they need to be called out as swastikas if they're swastikas. I don't know exactly what she said, but I know she did make a s strong point to ask us to call them what they are, which are swastikas. 
So I, I don't really know how to phrase that, but um, something, something to that effect. Uh, you know, Rebecca Lieberman spoke, blah, blah, blah. I'll watch the video again. Yeah, okay. I think that, yeah. Right, I, I don't recall. I mean, I recall this is the gist of what her comments. I don't right, recall right, exactly. Right. What I, I think that it was important to her that, that we called them trusted, because I could be wrong, but... Um, uh, and... Oh, so... 6A5? Um, this is the second one. Am I going too far? Nope. No. Good. Okay. Good. Town manager's goals, Mr. Lola, sure. Um, th there's a, there's just a, 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 a grammatical, un uh, it's unclear. Mr. Friedman noted he came up with a different set of goals outside of the thing that he's required to do by charter. Charter That could be read as what Mr. Friedman is required to do by charter, oh, you know? Okay. So the he is, so maybe that the town manager is yep. required okay. to do by charter. Yeah, fine. Um, and then, um, and then at the end of that discussion, the board also discussed their thoughts on the form of the review of the town manager. They all would like to move to a different form next year. And then I think in the, I watched the video, the board uh, decided to continue discussion at a future meeting. Okay. That's it for those sets of minutes. Thank you. So there's a motion and a second. Um, any more discussion? All in favor? So approved. Moved and Move approved. that the board approve the meeting minutes of October 2nd, 2018, as amended. Second. Comments? Um, 6B2, middle of the page, yes. Rep. Jones talked budgets, noting that Chapter 90 funds have an extra, I think there needs to be a dollar sign in front of the 40 million. Okay. Because it could mean widgets. Okay. We don't know. <laughs> Anyone else? You do a good job with these, they're, they're hard. <laughs> Try. And I look at some of the things that I said and think, well, I, I didn't really mean it that way. Okay, we'll vote. Yes, thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> um, any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Say aye. So. Uh, we have to go into executive session. Yes. Bob, we have that, right? Yep. Okay. Okay. So, no. would, could I, I take a motion to I go in the executive session? Uh, you got to adjourn, don't you? Yeah, Vanessa. Do something. Vanessa is going to read. Move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, and that the chair declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body, and not to return to open session. Second. Yep. Any discussion? Yeah. Uh, yes. Please. Roll, roll, roll call. Vote. Okay. Uh, okay. Roll call vote. John. Yes. Yes. Dan. Yes. Uh, yes. Vanessa. Yeah. Andy, yes. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Where are we going?